The Hollywood heartthrob Jason Momoa, star of Aquaman, made a comeback with a sequel, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, in December of 2023, with some more aquatic action filled with CGI and visual effects. Get ready for a behind-the-scenes journey that will leave you in awe of the incredible technology and the creativity that went into crafting this aquatic spectacle. In this video, we'll explore the technological details that haven't been released until today that were able to bring this sequel to the big screen. Perhaps the most attractive thing that played the big role in making Aquaman a huge success was the presence of the charismatic Jason Momoa as Aquaman himself, and of course, Amber Heard as his wife Mira, who has been under the radar for her much publicized and uh, high profile legal battle with her ex-husband Johnny Depp. This whole scenario also caused her role as Mira to be really short, and she got just about 15 to 20 minutes of screen time. Anyways, Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is the 15th and final installment in the DC Extended Universe, and was directed by the returning director, James Wan. Other cast includes Patrick Wilson as Aquaman's half-brother Orm, Nicole Kidman and Willem Dafoe as Arthur's parents, and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as Manta. This time around, the movie was all about the bromance between the two royal brothers, and the director has called it a bromance action adventure. Production for the movie commenced in June 2021, wrapped up in January of 2022, filming in places like the United Kingdom, Hawaii, Los Angeles, and New Jersey, plus some extra scenes in New Zealand. In March of 2022, Warner Brothers faced the challenges of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic prompting a necessary adjustment to its release schedule. The pandemic significantly impacted visual effects vendors' workloads, causing delays and disruptions in film production timelines. With an estimated production budget ranging between 205 and 215 million, the film stands as one of the most expensive productions in cinematic history. But did all the money make it receive positive reviews? Not really. It managed to gross 279 million at the box office, with an average Rotten Tomatoes rating of just 35%. Compared to the billion dollar business done by the first part, that's pretty bad, right? Now since it is a live action of an imaginary world Atlantis that doesn't look like what we have available in real life, they had to put in enormous amounts of CGI, and in fact Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom has a total of 500 CGI details including cities, ruins, plants and animals, plus a lot of crafts and gizmos scattered throughout. Every frame of the movie featured visual effects provided by Cinesite, DNEG, Industrial Light & Magic, Moving Picture Company, Scaling VFX, and Rodeo FX. While some people say that the CGI and immersion in the movie were lacking, others say that it's a bit flat and wait for it, like a Saturday morning cartoon. Now that is an insult to a movie with so many big names in the cast. According to Juan, the creative team aimed to enhance the sequel's engagement and excitement for viewers by expanding both the story and the characters. He clarified that in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, the portrayal of Atlantis underwent significant expansion compared to the first film, and this meant that the moviegoers got to see the city's depths, showcasing the residential areas, and even had an area influenced by New York's Times Square. They've also made the movie more vibrant and colorful, with so much to see in each and every scene. But let's break down some of the technologies the visual effects team used to make the movie now. Starting off with how the filmmakers filmed all of the underwater scenes. In Aquaman 2, they took filming underwater scenes to a whole new level. The filmmakers wanted to make the actors' lives easier, so they used a pretty cool setup similar to what was done in the Flash movie. They filmed the actors using volumetric capture and LED walls that capture their performances and create digital actors for the underwater scenes when needed. In the first Aquaman movie, they used blue screen stages and a weird tuning fork frame to lift up the actors for underwater shots. It looked good in the end, but it was uncomfortable for the actors and the director, James Wan, had limited freedom with the camera. But for the sequel, they went all out. They used groundbreaking technology from Eyeline Studios where they got a circular booth with 136 cameras all around it, capturing the actor from every angle. The actor, decked out in their superhero gear, stands in the middle of the booth with sensors on their headband to capture even the flow of their hair underwater using VFX. 
The booth is just big enough to bring in a mechanical horse for scenes where the cast rides imaginary sea creatures like the seahorse Storm. Inside the booth, the actor can see a 360 degree plasma wall showing the underwater world for the scene, and then outside the booth, the other actors perform to cameras that catch their facial expressions, and these get superimposed on the avatars shown on the plasma screens inside of the booth. This new method not only gave the actors more freedom in their movements, but also allowed director James Wan to do whatever he wanted with the camera during the special effects editing. But after the Eyeline Studios magic, they mix that footage with scenes shot on a blue screen. This way, they get the best of both worlds, the freedom the actors had in Eyeline Studios and the fantastical underwater scenes brought to life with visual effects. Other than that, they also utilized the drive for wet technique, where actors were filmed using unique tuning fork rigs designed by the special effects team. The drive for wet technique in filmmaking is a clever approach used to simulate underwater scenes without the need for actual water. Instead of shooting in a submerged environment, actors are filmed in a dry setting using different tools and equipment to create the illusion of being underwater. This way, the team has to work on the footage to mimic the buoyancy and movement associated with underwater environments. Once the footage is captured, sophisticated visual effects are employed during post-production to replace the dry surroundings with computer-generated underwater landscapes, creatures, and the other elements. The movie was shot using IMAX certified digital cameras. Primary camera was the Panavision Millennium DXL2 IMAX that was paired with the Panavision Primo 70 lenses delivering crystal clear visuals. This powerhouse is capable of shooting in remarkable 8K at 60 frames per second, ensuring an unparalleled detail and clarity. The movie employed DXL RAW 8K as the negative format and DXL RAW 8K source format as the cinematographic process, showcasing a commitment to some high quality imaging. Additionally, the Ari Alexa SXT camera, known for its excellence in capturing Ari Raw in open gate format, played a significant role, and about 80% of the whole movie was shot using it. Early reviews of the film, while largely negative, acknowledged the commendable chemistry between Jason Momoa and Patrick Wilson. But despite this positive aspect, the overall reception has shown disappointment in the movie's content and execution. Critics noted that Momoa's performance stood out, with enjoyment evident in his portrayal of his character. However, the film faced criticism for its fast-paced editing. There was a rapid progression that rushed through significant events in a whirlwind of montages and voiceovers. As of January 2023, Jason Momoa has expressed his deepest affection for the character, stating he will always be Aquaman. However, he also conveyed interest in exploring other characters. During the same month, DC Studios co-CEOs Gunn and Safran acknowledged the potential for Momoa's return to the DC Universe, specifically as Aquaman, although a final decision has not been reached. Although reports have surfaced suggesting Warner Brothers have seriously contemplated concluding the Aquaman film series considering Momoa for the role of Lobo, who is another character from DC Comics. So if they did cast Momoa as Lobo, he wouldn't be able to portray Aquaman in the DCU. So did you watch the movie? Is it really that bad as the critics are calling it? Tell us in the comments. Also, check out their channel for more amazing videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more interesting Galore Text videos. Thanks for watching.